sitting at the holiday table with your past relatives. I'm recording these shows just a bit, just a little bit before Christmas, so uh, these are coming out on the holiday week. So hopefully you guys are all having great holidays. You're enjoying yourselves, and you're sitting around the table enjoying meals with family and remembering family that have that have passed that are, that are that are gone and i thought to myself wouldn't it be great i think it would be great but some people probably are going to themselves no no, no this is not a good idea we shouldn't be doing this at all wouldn't it be great if we could bring back our relatives if we could bring back those who've passed on those who've died. Wouldn't it be great if we could go back and create AI-based recreations of these individuals and then just just talk to them, just have a conversation with them? Because some of us, we had we had parents, we had mentors, we had other people who, who passed, and we miss them. We'd love to be able to sort of tap their brains again and ask them questions about what's happening today. And over the last little while, we've talked about digital avatars and digital twins and being able to take somebody's social media and everything that I've generated. For example, if you go back, this is show number 901. If you go back over all 900 shows of the Think Future podcast, you could probably take all 900 shows of mine and feed them into an AI and create a virtual Chris. And this virtual Chris would be able to answer your questions, would be able to say things like I would say them. I don't know if it would be able to, to, to thrive and grow like a regular human would, but it would be a snapshot of me at that point in time. And even after I'd be gone, you'd be able to talk to this virtual Chris if you wanted to. So companies in China, I believe, are trying to resurrect individuals who passed in the exact same way they create they go back and they look at their social media and they look at all of their media they look at their emails they, they look at their emails they look at everything that they've created they talk to the relatives and they go back and they create a digital avatar of this relative who's passed away and some people are saying oh my god that's the most horrible thing you know people live people die we need some kind of closure when somebody's gone they're gone we don't need this sort of semi-alive entity which is sort of a creepy representation of somebody. I think even a Black Mirror episode did something like that. Somebody's somebody's boyfriend or girlfriend passed away and they, they, they mail-ordered a new one, which was a actual human version of that person in a digital body. Not a digital body, but it was actual uh, 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 a synthetic body. Now, when I watch that episode, I'm sure a lot of people watch that episode and go, oh my God, isn't that horrific? Wouldn't it be awful to bring back a deceased relative? And I say, I think it's the opposite. I think it's the opposite. If there's people who you have admired in the past, if people, people in your life, mentors and parents and other figures that you've asked for advice from, have you, that you've been able to talk to and get some solace from, I think it would be great if we had representations of these people sitting around the table at Christmas time or whatever holiday you have and be able to talk to them and be able to interact with them. Why is this a bad thing? Why would it be such a bad thing to bring those people back and go, hey, you know, what's it like? I mean, I remember reading an article in Wired magazine where somebody tried to do this with their, with their father. And they went in and they took a lot of their notes and they took a lot of his, his output from social media and they, they created a, re, a reproduction of his dad. Reproduction of his dad. And he had conversations with this reproduction of his dad. And he thought the conversations were great, but then he kept wondering why this version of his dad never said he loved him. Well, in real life, the dad never said he loved him. So I'm not sure why he expected... <laughs> the digital avatar to actually grow as a human being and say that he loved him. So I don't know, I mean, the, the, the reality is, is that at this point, you could conceivably take everyone's, one, a, an individual social media and create a digital avatar of this person. But that would be a snap snapshot of that individual at that point in time. 
at this point in time, that individual wouldn't be able to grow. They might be able to provide responses similarly to the way ChatGPT provides responses, but it wouldn't be able to grow. It wouldn't be able to change. Like in the aforementioned avatar I was telling you about, this avatar of this guy's dad would never be able to grow enough to be able to say I love you to his son because he just didn't have the human ability to be able to grow. And maybe some point in the future we will have AI that does have, that can mimic the human ability to grow. That can mimic a human ability to do something like that. But like I've said before, when you try to duplicate a human being, you're going to get that duplicate of a human being, but you're not going to get anything more than the duplicate of a human being. And that's the beauty of human beings is that we can grow, we can change, we can do better. AI can't do that right now. They are, it is stuck where it is. And unless you go in and reprogram it, say this guy wanted his dad avatar to actually say to him, I love you, he would have to go in and reprogram his dad avatar to allow the avatar to say those words to him. Now, outside of that, I think it's a great thing. I think being able to, and this is one of the things that I think human beings have this urge towards immortality. They want, and maybe they may not want to live forever, but they want some piece of themselves to be able to survive into the next generation, the next generation. Maybe originally it was DNA because we, then we have children and the DNA survives on. But if we have digital avatars, then it doesn't necessarily need to be just the DNA. It can actually be a vir virtual digital representation of that individual. And just think of it. Imagine being able to tap into all of these digital representations of these individuals years and de decades and generations after they're gone. I think this can only be a great thing. And if I'd love to have my parents back at the Christmas table, I think that would be fantastic. What about you? What do you think? That's it for me for today. See you next time. And until then, don't forget to think future.